what we're going to be doing here is manipulating these McLaren series and these Taylor series so that if we don't have something like sine of x, but we have something like sine of x squared, we can write another Taylor series or McLaren series without having to go through the whole process of creating our own. So on this one, I want to write the first five non-zero terms of the Taylor polynomial. Taylor polynomial, it means the same thing as a Taylor series for sine of x plus cosine of x, and this is going to be centered at zero because this is the Taylor polynomial of cosine centered at zero, and this is the Taylor polynomial of sine centered at zero. So how would we write the first five non-zero terms of this? What would be the first term? One plus x plus minus x squared over 2 factorial plus minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus okay this is a pretty easy one right so all we have to do here um, and since none of the powers here match up we don't have to worry about combining terms um, and so we've got the first five terms there just by taking the first three from cosine and the first two from sine. Uh, I do want you to notice here, this, this is something interesting, and um, it's not quite an alternating series, so we have two positives and then two negatives and then two positives and then two negatives, um, but there's, there's a feature of this series that, um, that allows one of the, in my opinion, one of the coolest formulas in math to be true, or it allows us to prove it. Um, but this series is really similar to what? Look at your paper. And the sum here that we get ends up being really close to which one? E to the x, right? So it has all the same terms as e to the x, but um, in e to the x they're all positive, and here we get um, every other two is negative. Don't think I said that right, but you know what I mean. Okay, how about this one? So I want the first five non-zero terms of sine of x squared. So what am I going to do to get this one? Yeah, every, anywhere we see an x, we're going to put an x squared. So the first term instead of x is x squared. Second term instead of x cubed is x to the 6. So we get x to the 6 over 3 factorial. Plus x to the 10th over 5 factorial. Minus x to the 14th over 7 factorial, plus, I think we need one more, right? Yep, x to the 16th, nope. So the next one here would be x to the 9th, so this would be x to the 18th over 9 factorial, and so on. Okay, that one's pretty easy, right? So how about this one? Sine of x squared plus cosine of x. So we just did sine of x squared. Here's, here's our sum for sine of x squared. So we want to do sine of x squared plus cosine of x. Uh, what's our first term going to be? OK. So sine of x squared plus cosine of x is going to be 1. That comes from the cosine. Uh, then what? So, so we have an x squared over 2 factorial here, and we also have an x squared here. So this is x squared over 2, and this is 1x squared. So what are we going to have here? 3x squared over 2. One of them is negative. This one's negative, right? So it's x squared minus 1 half of x squared, so it would be x plus x squared over 2, right? Um, do we have any x cubes? x to the fourth. We have this, and we don't have to combine it with anything here, so um, that's going to be plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Let's just get the x to the sixth, and we'll be done. Um, so the x to the sixth over 6 factorial here, and the x to the sixth over 3 factorial here, how would I get a common denominator? I want to combine those. So I have x to the sixth, and this is a negative, x to the sixth over 6 factorial, plus x to the 6th over 3 factorial. What do I do to get a common denominator? Six, three, yeah, I need to multiply this by 6 times 5 times 4. So 6 times 5 times 4 
6 times 5 times 4. What is 6 times 5 times 4? 120. So it's going to be 120 times x to the 6th over 6 factorial minus 1 over 6 factorial, which would be what? 119 x to the 6th over 6 factorial. Um, and then what's the next term going to be? This one should be pretty easy. Yeah, it's going to be the x to the 8th term here, so it's x to the 8th over 8 factorial. For something like this, would a general term be easy to do? No, because we're combining some and we're not combining others. So you would not be expected to write a general term here, but you might just be expected to write the first few.